Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. Where the apocalypse is not now, it'll wait for us as long as we need. Last time on this series, we did just that, covering everything important or notable to both crafters and gatherers through the entirety of Heaven's Ward. I apologize in advance for anyone who hasn't tried to do Heaven's Ward crafting legit and plans to. It is terrible. But we're done with that now. We have a war to return to, and tons of side unlocks to battle our way through besides. It's time to end the Dragonsong War. Before we get into new stuff, let's make a quick distinction within roulettes. Aetheral Chemical Research Facility, despite being the finale to the story as a dungeon, is not main story roulette. It's 50-60 roulette. Remember, main story roulette is for the two eight-man dungeons only, and they are the only two. Similarly, the Trials of Ravana and Bismarck are trial roulette, not leveling roulette. Hard mode trials all go in trial roulette. Only the three total normal mode trials in the game went to leveling roulette. But speaking of roulettes, let's fill in 50-60 roulette. Let's start here in Edelshire, and we have two dungeons. The first is from Midnight Dew for the Gubal Library Hard, one of the fastest dungeons in the game. Over in the southwest is a Moogle with Soam All Hard, which is actually fairly difficult. Before worrying about turning in either of these quests though, walk outside to the western side of the Hinterlands for this treasure hunter. She has for you St. Malkian's Arboretum. This one in particular is important for a future unlock. Arboretum and Library are both out here in the Hinterlands and Soam All Hard is in Mogholm in the Mists. Out of the way in the Sea of Clouds is Never Reap, or as I call it, Always Weep, because it's the single worst dungeon in the entire game, and that's no hyperbole. I would rather that damn Kraken over and over again. Let's head back to Ishgard meanwhile and we could go to the airship landing. All the way down south in the landing is Do It For Gilly. Many of the zone markers block the quest icon on the map, so you'll have to at least come here to even know that it's there. But this is for Fractal Continuum, one of my favorite dungeons, and it's another of those important dungeons for a later unlock. Now back at 50, I did miss another part of the Pharaoh's serious quest, the epilogue. However, that was not important until now. Do this quest in Aleport before heading to Limsa Lominsa proper. Where, in the same place as we unlocked Dolebreaker Isle, we have Dolebreaker Isle hard mode, which somehow manages to be worse than the original dungeon. On the other side of the bar, over at the Maelstrom Barracks, is the reason why we return to Aleport. This quest is for Pharaoh Sirius Hard. The completion for this one is up in the airship area. Over in Gridania, we have the Lost City of Amdapur Hard in the Conjurer's Guild. Honestly, a cool dungeon, I'd say. And then that's it! That is all of the level 60 dungeons that are not from the main story. Remember to keep up on 5060 Roulette or start queuing for dungeons manually, because personally, my quest list is starting to fill up pretty bad. This will also let you drown in tombstones to buy up full sets of ironworks and shire gear for rolls as they get to 50 and 60. And we're still gonna want poetics for level 70. Which, in addition to the same vendors, there's a new vendor in Ishgard by the main Aetherite. She appeared for completion of 3.0 and makes for a secondary choice for getting Shia gear. I'm going to format this video a bit differently to the Realm Reborn one, in that I'm going to put the level 60 available jobs here. This is partly due to all of the tomes you'll be earning for clearing out your 5060 dungeon quests. If you own Shadowbringers, or the most recent expansion which grandfathers you in to owning Shadowbringers, you will at least have access to two more jobs. The first is at the Gridania Aetherite, Gunbreaker. This tank is definitely not something I'd recommend to a newbie tank. Start with 
any of the other tanks before giving Gunbreaker a go. And as a note for this quest in particular, there is a small battle, but it should be extremely easy even with basic level 60 gear. Put on the gear and stone when you complete the quest, make a gear set, and away you go as a gunbreaker. Then, go to Limsa Lamimsa for the other job, Dancer. As of Shadowbringers, this may be the simplest job in the entire game, so there's a good learning curve despite starting at level 60. We also get the Chocobo Hot and Cold theme, so I am all in for FF9 representation. Now let's take a detour to talk about extreme fights. To start, pick up Gods of Eld outside of Four Tom's Manor, even if you have no interest in extremes either. This quest has other unlocks too. But when you head to Mordona for this quest, stop by the bar to visit Yoshi P. Story related extremes like Ultima and now Thordan and any future major story extremes are all from Yoshi P. Keep that in mind for the 3.3 trial extreme unlock. But head on inside to the Rising Stones, into the Solar, and meet the Mystery Boy in charge of Ravana and Bismarck Extreme. Short quests later, I still recommend getting a friend to carry you through extremes since queues can be hit or miss. Both Ravana and Bismarck can be soloed at 80, burst DPS mattering a lot for Bismarck. At least until the stat squish of Endwalker makes that a bit tougher to do. Once Endwalker releases, you're gonna need a few more people to get you through Bismarck. Major notes for Heavensward extremes, birds and totems. In A Realm Reborn, the primal mounts were all ponies. Now every extreme primal for Heavensward is going to drop a burb. With an ultimate super burb phoenix for collecting them all, like Kirin was the super pony for collecting all the ponies. There are also the totems that drop for killing an extreme fight. Every extreme from this point on will drop a totem of some kind. 10 totems is one weapon, and 99 totems is one mount from that specific fight. This makes farming them a lot less RNG, but still RNG even with the increased drop rates. These can be turned in in Idleshire on the right side vendor. All of the burbs and weapons to see and get for glam. Though many of these have crafted versions now, so you're probably just better off getting those because they look better. While we're here, let's talk to Rowena and see that we can't. This is because I am on Samurai and jobs from future expansions do not have relics for previous expansions. So the Stormblood job of Samurai does not have a Heavensward relic. So, on to Dragoon, and we can now unlock the grind for the Anima Weapon. Just like Zodiac weapons in A Realm Reborn, these are purely for the glamour. Shia weapons are just as good, and don't have weeks of grinding to get them. And there are no special trials locked behind this one, so there's no reason besides the glamour. Now for the biggest unlock of the video, we have Disarmed. This is the unlock for the 8-man raid series, Alexander. We saw him rise from the lake in the post credit scene, so now we have to go solve that problem. You will need flight for a few points, but again, you should have gotten it already as you progressed through the story. Progress through this short story and unlock the Fist of the Father. This is something you can easily just normally queue for. This is not a savage raid like Coils were. It's perfectly safe. And at least 8 of the fights at this point are super easy to just get in and kill blindly. And I would wager you should do this raid series for Poetics. Every instance you do in Alexander is guaranteed to give you 100 Poetics for the newbie bonus. And because there are 12 fights in a raid series, that's 1200 Poetics plus the base reward for clearing. Close to 1400 Poetics just for clearing the series. On top of that, upon unlocking the second fight, Cuff of the Father, 
you unlock normal raid roulette. Again, coils are not in here because they count as savage. So now you have another huge drop of poetics and a roulette to do as needed. Quick special acknowledgement here to Pepsi Man, who was the bane of statics everywhere. Rearmed marks the unlock for the second tier, Midas, and eight fights to go. I do recommend following the whole story, but let's talk about what each fight gave us in the first tier. Everyone basically will leave without rolling on any loot, meaning you can get all of it. It's basically all junk, or at best glamour. However, do take this junk. Back in Idleshire, this vendor on the left, Alexander Ports Exchange, is split up into each tier and between normal and savage manifestos. Spend the items you got for blue items, and you can sell them to your grand company for seals. That's my plan anytime I get here. Also, the precision parts you get or junk for the animal weapons, so unless you are doing the animal weapon, precision parts do nothing for you. You also can't avoid them because they drop from killing the fights themselves. But I mentioned Savage Manifestos. Back with Yoshi P, we have the unlocks for each tier of Alexander Savage. After clearing each tier in normal mode, you can come back here for the Savage versions. These fights are not in roulettes, not even mentor roulette. Just like coils, these are savage modes. You will need friends to experience these at all, but there is no additional story to Alexander Savage, just really hard fights and diable versions of the glamour you can get from normal mode. But on that note, we have a new feature to test your damage against fights in Idleshire. This is the closest we will ever get to an in-game parser. Stone Sky Sea. This is very, very simple. You are given a list of all the fights you have unlocked that are considered end-game on any level. Each one is a dummy with a set HP value based on your chosen job and the fight. The later into the expansion or the harder the fight in general, the more HP it has. If you are around the minimum eye level of a fight, test your DPS against it, and you should succeed, or at least come very close. Not all dummies are tuned perfectly, but it's close enough to tell if you are missing gear or skill and need to look up some rotations. If you're, say, 10% away from clearing a dummy and your gear is fine, you may want to look up some rotations. Back in Ishgard is the final unlock we can get now, our 24-man raid series, the Shadow of Mach. The quest is Sky Pirates, and there is plenty of Sky Pirates involved. These will all join Crystal Tower in the Roulette for Alliance raids, and there are some unlocks later that will benefit from having this raid series done. You may even be able to see the Void Arc off in the distance after unlocking the raid. Back in the day, we knew this is where the raid would take us before the patch even came out, as the Ark has been flying around here since day one. But with following along with all these unlocks, you'll be gaining tons of EXP. You will likely hit level 62 on at least one job before hitting Stormblood, which will bestow upon you a new skill, which differs completely from Heaven's Word. Despite the fact that Stormblood does have job quests, all jobs have them, even the Shadowbringers jobs, we don't need to do those quests to get new skills. The exception is still the level 70 skill, like the level 60 skill was an exception for the Stormblood jobs. You still can't use them in instanced content, but this is a key point to know. Which, at some point, we need to return to the story. The Dragon Song War is not yet over. A tomorrow in which man and dragon might live together in harmony, then as distant as the very stars in the heavens. But along this story section, we'll see similar actions to a Realm Reborn giving us gear. But instead of singular items, we will be allowed to select coffers. 
These are the 240 set of Tome Gear, so nowhere near as good as Poetics, but if you were struggling to get Poetics somehow, especially with Alexander around, this makes for good filler until you have Shire Gear. And you can just sell it to your grand company when you're done with it, and that's a bit better than a little bit of gill. Our next major unlock comes after the completion of 3.1 with the quest, As Goes Light, So Goes Darkness. Future shaped by the choices we made, in ways we could never have foreseen. Born of good and evil, of light and darkness, and shepherded by our hand. Be it for weal, or be it for woe. After completion, we can return to the Waking Sands for the beginning of the Warring Triad Trial series. Three side trials that are each very different. We even get to start off with fighting against Power Man 5000 himself. Boy, he was right about worlds colliding. Come back here after killing Tree Man for the continuation of the questline and the extreme versions of the icons. Rather than a tribe spawning these primals or the bard singing of our tales, a kid shall tell us to talk to a talking orb. How the mighty have fallen. But mighty we still are, as we finish all of these side activities. Back in the story we have a couple main story dungeons to go through, some trials as well, and the journey to the end of Heaven's Word. After completion of 3.3, we unlock the firmament as I went over in the last video. But in Four Tom's Manor we have... something a bit more important. An unmarked quest, but more important than anything thus far, the paths we walk and the quest line it follows. Take this journey to remember, as we close the book on the Dragonsong War. But another war is around the corner. We must remember, while ever striving forward, these are the burdens we bear. For those we have lost. For those we can yet save. Thank you for watching part 2 to the Heaven's Word section of your first day. Unless they pull something like the Firmament again, that's everything I remembered needing to go over. If I miss something, feel free to mention it. But that will be for next time, when we make our way out of the snows into the sands of Giribanya for Stormblood. And may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And as always, an extra thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon, and an extra extra thanks to Ayudeva, Amen Al Khatib, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cutterell, Kyle Steinhalder, Meowfi, and Valor LLC. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>